Northwest-born author, philanthropist, and law graduate Rafila Matloko penned and published her debut motivational book, and uh, it's a novel she entitled Beyond Hopes and Dreams, The Lament of the African Child. Now, the book offers inspirational chapters that thoroughly detail topics for young Africans to have the courage to be conscious of their identity and find the purpose of their existence, regardless of one's background or even social status. Now, Rafila is here with me this morning to take us through the crux of this offering. Good morning, Rafila, and morning. welcome to Morning Live. Thank you so much. Let's talk about the inspiration behind you deciding to pen this book. What was it? Okay, I grew up in a very rural, remote rural area. So for me, I've always seen my life outside my village, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to go out there, make a difference. I've always wanted to go out there and inspire young people because it's very important, especially growing up in a, in a patriarchal um, society. So for me, I had to make, make my mark as a young South African girl and a young black girl, to, most importantly. And I, I do understand that this book is entirely uh, about your own life story and how you conquered some of those challenges that you encountered growing up. Uh, how did you? Um, in terms of our society, you know, we live in a generation whereby we, we get too ashamed of our struggles and our hardships. So for me, I went out there with my book because I, I, I also touched on a bit of like sensitive issues whereby most young people don't feel very comfortable to talk about. So for me, I was just reaching out there to say um, it's, 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 not, it's not abnormal. It's normal to go through those things because after all, it's how we grow. It's how, it, it's, it's how we mature in life. Yeah. Yes. And as a young girl growing up uh, in the rural parts of uh, the northwest province, what are some of the dreams and aspirations that you had? Well, most importantly, like I, I said earlier, I, I, I always dreamt of inspiring people. I always had people I looked up to. I've always looked up to um, Oprah Winfrey. So I've always wanted to be like her. And I think I'm on, on the journey of being like the Oprah Winfrey I've always looked up to. Right, right. Now, and uh, I do understand that publishing this book wasn't easy, eh? Yes, yes. Most important. Um, I think the most, uh, the most important thing was... Uh, the, getting it together and for me it was a, the most difficult thing as well because um, I struggled with publishing you know in terms of um, young authors we, we struggle a lot with mentorship we struggle a lot with getting um, spaces whereby we can actually get funds to, 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 to do our books because everything needs money these days so even doing a book you need money to do that mm -hmm. but then after all I, I got it all together and well I'm a, I'm a self-published author for now okay. yes okay so who's your target audience uh, and uh, yeah who is it that uh, you want to touch in a special way through uh, through reading this book I think young people, like from as young as 18 years old going up, uh, going up because um, we, we go through a lot when we go to varsity, even after like school, after matric, we go through a lot. And it can even be up to like, even young adults, like your 35 year old, your 40 year old, because I, I still believe that there are still 35 and 40 year olds who are still going through identity crisis. And which chapter in your life when, uh, you know, where you are today and you look back and be like, wow, how on earth did I manage to conquer this? <laughs> True. Um, at some point in my varsity life, I had to go through depression. It was sure. the most uh, difficult time of my life. But then, you know, when I look back right now, um, I'm very proud of myself with, with the way I've been dealing with it, with the way I've also grown from it. Because most of the time we feel like it's an unfortunate situation to go through ma like uh, massive depression. But then when you look back and, and, and to, to where I am today, I'm very proud of myself because I, I never thought, like, it, it's like a dark hole that you don't even think you would ever get out of. But then today I look, I, I look at myself and I look back and I smile every time because I still can't believe. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And the most important thing is, uh, you know, finding your identity and identifying that sense of purpose, hey? Yes, yes. Um, it's very important for us as young people to know ourselves, to know our journey, and to know where we come from and to know where we're going. Because if you don't know where you come from, you want to know where you're going. And if you don't know yourself or if you can't identify yourself, then it's going to be very difficult to integrate yourself to the society. And the most uh, exciting thing about this book is that uh, you'll be taking your life story beyond the borders of South Africa and uh, you'll be launching the book in London. How did that <laughs> come about um, and give us those details well dr john Kani attended my launch uh, last year when i launched the book so he said to me um normally uh, you know when when he goes to bookshops mm -hmm. um the african section the african literature section is is normally the the the, 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 the smallest so for me i'm trying to encourage uh, young people to read i mean with, with the fourth in industrial revolution kicking in um we know we're losing the culture of um 
primary reading, like reading books, you know, in the libraries and whatnot. So what I'm trying to do is that um, I'm taking my book and launching it in London mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, they can also know that Africa is still alive and African oh, literature yes. is very important because, I mean, if in South Africa we don't really recognize African literature, then we, we might as well also take it to the world to say it's still alive. True, yes. true, yes. true. And the fact that you've, uh, I mean, you've identified your own sense of purpose and you've started an NGO called, is it uh, Civil Youth Institute? Yes, so yeah. Civil Youth Institute, it's, it's targeting young people, especially from, uh, from high schools. So in the previous years, I've, I've worked with the Department of Education, the Houghton Department, Department of Education and the Jobek City Municipality. So what we would do, we would go to schools and give them career mm -hmm. fairs, we would go to school, I'd be a motivational speaker because that's what I do as well. I'm, I'm a motivational speaker. You know, just to talk to the young people and, and make them realize that it's not the end of the road. You know, being in metric is not just the, the end of the road. It's the beginning, actually. Okay. And it doesn't mean that if you don't make it to varsity, there are no other avenues that you can actually get into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, for those willing to connect with you with regards to, uh, you know, motivational talks and getting a copy of this book, how do they connect with you? Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm on Facebook, Rifilo Matloko. I'm on Twitter, Rifilo Matloko. I'm also on Instagram, Rifilo Matloko. And then my email address would be rifilomatloko at gmail.com. All right. Great stuff. All the best, Rifilo. Uh, thank you so much. Well, that was LLB graduate, philanthropist, and author Rifilo Matloko. We were in just uh, in conversation with her about her book, self-published, and uh, yeah, it's titled Beyond Hopes and Dreams, Lament of the African Church.